Grin Technologies. We're going to do a basic satiator startup video so we can get you charging your batteries. Uh, the satiator itself uh, comes in this lovely box, comes with uh, AC cable, depending on where you live, make sure you choose the right one, and it comes with a DC output cable. We designed the satiator to be a universal battery charger so it can charge a variety of different battery chemistries, voltages, etc. Uh, we have a couple different models, 48 volt, 72 volt are most popular and each one of those can do 360 watts of charging power. We have a plethora of adapters available for most batteries. So uh, for the most part we've got uh, XLR to 4-pin XLR, this works for juiced bikes. We've got an XLR to DC jack, which works for a lot of the different down to batteries. We've got an XLR to XT60, we have that both in male and female versions. We've got a XLR to what we call an ST adapter. Uh, this works great for any of the batteries uh, that Grin sells these days. And we have an older kind of XLR to RCA style connector. Don't hook it up to your TV. So, first things first, let's turn the charger on. I'm going to plug in the AC cable. Boom, charger comes on. Tells us the firmware version, tells us what type of satiator it is 48 volts, 8 amps. And here we have the, the screen that you'll see when you are first setting up the device. It's going to ask you to select a charge profile. And if you're wondering what charge profile to select, you should look at your battery or talk to your battery manufacturer to make sure you get the right specifications. This battery is a little LIGO. I'm going to use that as our demonstration battery. It's a 36 volt battery and it's not very big, so I'm not going to charge it very quickly. So I'm going to press this lower button here that says next to select the battery charge profile. So it's going to present a list of batteries that we feel are kind of a generic set that most people will be able to use. If you have a battery that's different or uh, a battery that doesn't meet any of these uh, preloaded profile specifications, then you can look at the manual, which will detail how to program it uh, for a custom battery and um, go from there. If you need help with that, just contact our support team. They'll be happy to help. So this is a 36 volt battery. I'm going to go down to a slightly slower charge rate. So here's our standard charge rate. What it shows here right on the screen, it says the nominal voltage, 36 volt lithium. It says the final charge voltage here, 42 volts, and it says the charge current 4 amps. That's a pretty fast charge for this little battery, so we're not going to leave it charging for very long, but uh, it should be fine for most batteries over 10 amp hours. So next thing I'm going to do is hold and select this charge profile here. It says OK. I let go of the button. It says, do you want to activate this profile? I'm going to say yes. From there, uh, it goes into the charge select profile screen. So. Because this is the first time I'm setting the device up, I have to tell it to start. So I'm going to press and hold that. It says connect battery. It tells me what profile is active. So 36 volt lithium, standard charge, 42 volts, final charge voltage, 4 amps charge rate. I'm going to grab the DC output cable that came in that box, plug it into the charger here. There's a little twist lock. Make sure you fully seat the cable and lock it in there. Once the DC cable is plugged in, depending on your battery, you may need an adapter. We sell a variety of different adapters. This one here takes XLR and converts it into Anderson so I can plug it into the satiator. Connect that together, grab my Anderson connector, and just plug it right in. Here, the satiator immediately starts showing what the voltage of the battery is, and you can see it starts to put current into the battery. So at the top of the screen, it rotates through um, how many watts are going into the battery and also what the temperature of the charger is. Uh, it also tells you what the final voltage of the charge profile is, right there, charging to 42 volts. This um, icon on the left is a little battery icon. That will actually change as the battery gets more full. So once it gets near the end of charge, it'll be kind of a more full um, little animation. The statistics here, we look at the amount of time it's been charging for, how many watt hours are going in, as well as how many amp hours are going in. When it's charging, I can rotate through the screens here. You can press that down button. Either way works, up button or down button. But if I press down here, this is the stats for that charge profile. So as you use this device, as you keep charging, 
it's going to say how many cycles have you done how many kilowatt hours have you put into that charge profile how many amp hours etc and it also tells you your averages so you can see from here you know how much am i actually using on it on my trips things like that can help inform a decision for a future battery purchase etc um, the next screen down is actually a little graph that shows the charge current with the solid line and the voltage is the bar graph. So as this uh, profile moves along, we're going to see that kind of typical curve where the voltage comes up, it starts being kind of a slow ramp as the current uh, is forced into the battery and charges the battery. At the end of the profile, the voltage is going to go up to a flat level as the charger maintains 42 volts and then the current starts dropping down. This is a cool little way just to check to see if anything weird happened if your battery tripped or whatever, you can see it on this little graph. Um, back to the main screen, what we do is if we, you know, if we leave this for a couple hours and it charges the battery, you'll see eventually it'll go to charge complete. Uh, all you need to do then is disconnect the battery from the charger and go ride your bike. So I'm just going to disconnect it here from the battery and what you saw there was the screen goes back to connect battery. So that's great. So the output on the device is, is disabled until it measures a charge voltage. If when you plug in your battery, nothing happens, it stays on connect battery, but you know it's turned on, you know it's ready to go, you can try pressing and holding the bottom button to force the start. This will tell the output to enable even though it's not detecting a voltage. If you do this and you see no current flowing, then we have an issue with either the connection or the battery or something like that. So it would be a good idea to, to get in touch with us if you see that problem. And it might be that your fuse is blown on your battery or whatever. All the chargers are fully QC'd, so we know they leave the door working. Um, one other thing, if you're connecting a battery that you haven't charged before with a satiator and you're not sure if you've connected it properly or, or you're not sure if it's... Um, the right pinout for a, an adapter that you might have had to make to make your battery compatible with the XLR, the satiator is luckily fully able to deal with reverse polarity. So if you connect, so right here, I've connected the battery totally backwards here. On the screen, the satiator will say, hey, your battery is reversed. Um, so what you'd want to do there is then swap your battery to be able to charge properly. And it'll boom, start charging right away as soon as it's corrected. I'm just going to make sure that I put this back to normal so that no one else has a problem. So um, some other neat features of the Satiator, uh, given that it's a universal battery, is that it should be designed to charge more than one different type of battery. So um, in an example here, I'm going to set up another charge profile. So say I wanted to charge more quickly, or say, for example, I wanted to um, charge the battery to a lower terminal voltage to make sure I get a bit longer cycles out of the battery. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to enable another charge profile for this battery. So when you're in this connect battery screen on your satiator, you can press and hold the top button and it will return to profile list. That little window pops up. As soon as I release the button, it gives me that list. Now, if I had more than one profile, I could press the up and down buttons and select a different one. So right now I don't have more than one profile. So let's add another profile. I'm going to take both fingers or two fingers on one hand, whatever you want to do, press and hold both buttons. It's say enter setup. From here, I can edit the profiles. There. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to enable an 85% charge for a 36 volt battery. This is going to let me make this battery last longer because, you know, I'm just doing regular trips that I saw. And I'm only using about, you know, 70% of the battery anyway, so why would I fully charge it? So I'm going to go ahead there, press and hold that. Do I want to activate it? Yes, I do want to activate it. Boom. So one of the other features of the charger here, I'm just going to pause and highlight this default with a question mark. If you want the charger to turn on, automatically go into a charge profile, you can say this is the default profile. And that will, as soon as you turn the AC on, it will go right into that profile. You can connect it to your battery and go. If you don't select it, it's going to turn on, give you the list of profiles, and you can select which charge profile you want to activate. Go. So now that I've enabled that charge profile, this little dot is now filled. On the, preview, on the next profile here, you see the dot's not filled. So that tells you which profiles are actually active. So I've got my standard charge profile active, and then I've got my 85% charge profile active. Um, once I'm done editing all the profiles, if I press and hold the top button, it exits, release that, 
Now I want to get out of this. I can either scroll down to exit setup or I can just press and hold the top button and the charger will reboot back into the select profile screen. So now I've got my standard charge profile, which we enabled first. I'm going to scroll down here and here is my second tro charge profile, which is the 85%. So I'm just going to go ahead and activate that here. You notice now it goes back to the connect battery screen. 85% charge is now highlighted there as a call out line. And then our terminal voltage, instead of being 42 volts, is now 40.5 volts. So I'm going to go ahead, connect that up. Off we go, charging just like the other profile. So that's uh, the basic way to select included profiles. We have an ability to connect to a PC if you buy an adapter that has a communication jack on it. So to get this to work, you also have to buy a TRS communication, which we sell on our website as well. Easy option when you're purchasing the Satiator. That lets you connect it to our PC software, which you can make custom profiles more quickly. Or if you're, say, a bike shop and you want to have a, a set of different profiles you have for all the bikes in your shop, you can you know, maintain that list there instead of using the button interface. Most people, you can get away with just using uh, the buttons on screen. So if I want to make a custom profile here, I'm going to go back into the setup menu, go to edit profiles here. I'm going to go to the bottom of the list quickly by just pressing the up button, create new profile. It's going to ask what type of battery chemistry I'm using. I'm going to say I got a, let's say it's a lead acid battery. I'm going to charge uh, whatever it is. So. I'm going to select the terminal voltage that makes sense for my lead acid battery. Let's say it's 12.4 uh, volts for a. Uh, no, let's say it's 13.2 volts. That's a great. That's a great, mostly charged battery. Um, it's going to give you a bunch of different options here. I would highly recommend reading the manual to fully understand what you're setting and make sure that it's going to be compatible with the battery you're charging. But what I just want to demonstrate here is that we can program the device without having to connect it to a computer. So onboard programming, save that. Now I've got my custom lead acid battery profile enabled on the device. So if I hooked up that to a lead acid battery, it start doing its charge, etc. So let's say I've selected this lead acid battery profile and I hook it up to a battery that's totally wrong. So waiting for the lead acid battery to be connected, I plug in the LIGO battery that I have on the table, battery voltage is too high. What the charger is looking for is that the battery that it's connected to is, is too high relative to the final charge voltage. So there is some protections, but uh, if you think about the overlap of what batteries are available, a 36 volt lithium battery, when it's fully charged, is actually about the same voltage as an almost empty 48 volt battery. So there is some uh, user protection. Well, not use, there is some user protection available, but you, you do have to know what you're plugging in. Other thing I wanted to point out is the user manual. Uh, user manual comes with the charger in the box. If you are someone that's technically inclined, you'll love this manual. If you're someone that wants to just understand how to use the device, you will also love this manual. It has a bit of both for everyone. The charger itself, uh, as you can see right here right now, after a couple minutes it goes into a screensaver. This is just to make the LED display last a bit longer. Um, when the charge is complete, uh, it will say charge complete here. Uh, I'm going to plug this in. Once the charger is on screensaver mode and it's charging a battery, You'll see here the actual instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current that's going into the device as well as how many amp hours have actually gone into the device. If I press any button here, it'll go back into the regular menu. I can go on the screen to here. So this battery is, is, is fully charged and what's actually happening because I'm charging it so quickly is that it's, it's tripping the BMS. We can cut that part of the video. So that's how you're gonna set up the profiles to charge your e-bike battery on a satiator. When you've just got the device, you can check the user manual on how to do and use some of the advanced features. Uh, and you can also download the software if you've bought a programming cable and an adapter to connect them up to the computer. 
Uh, if you have any questions about the charger uh, or you're having some issues uh, getting it set up the way you want it to, then send us an email. Espero que este video te ayudó mucho.